Hello and welcome back to part four of the five part uh, video series on how to knit the bunny hat with ear flaps. For this video I'm going to be showing you how to make the cute little bunny ears and how I sew them on to get the best flop like a bunny ear. Um, so for this part here you're, you will need a long cord. I use the 29 inch circular needles. You won't be knitting in the round but uh, you just need the long cord because um, you're going to be knitting in rows with a bit of length. Optional, I like to use a row counter for this. A yarn needle and some scissors. And for this I use the Red Heart Dreamy yarn in the ivory color. Alright, so let's get started. So our initial cast on for this, it's the 0 to 3 month size that I'm showing you for this. Um, each size I like to do a different length for the bunny ears. So for the 0 to 3 month, it has uh, the initial cast on is for 50 stitches. And then I like to leave a long tail as well for sewing the ear at the end. Uh, so to do that, to get the tail so that there's not too much uh, wastage of yarn, I take my 5.5 circular needles on my 29 inch long cord and then I'll take, so because the cast on is 50, um, I divide that in half to 25 and I will wrap my yarn around my needle 25 times. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So pull that off. Now if I just fold this in half, this here would be enough yarn to give me my 50 stitches for cast on, but because I want uh, a long tail for sewing the bunny ear at, a, at the end, um, I probably want about at least 16, 18 inches for sewing. So I'm gonna work myself down another 18 inches past where I folded it in half. And then that's where I'm going to create my slip knot, okay? And then you wanna take, insert your needle. And here, all we do is cast on by using the long tail cast on method, 50 stitches. So the first slip knot there counts as one. Two. Three. Four. Okay, so meet back up with me when you've cast on your 50 stitches. Okay, so here I am. I have cast on my 50 stitches for the beginning of my little bunny ear. And I have a long tail left over here for sewing the ear at the end. So just a quick note, when you turn to begin your work here, make sure that you're grabbing and knitting with your working yarn. Um, I've done it in the past where I've accidentally started to knit with my tail because it's so long. I got it confused with my working yarn, so oops on that one. Okay, so making sure that you're working with your working yarn. Uh, what we want to do here now is we're going to create a knit one, purl one ribbing. So knit the first and then purl, then I just give my yarn a little tug there so it doesn't loosen up on me, and then just repeat that. So knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Okay, and you want to do that all the way to the end. So you're doing a knit one, purl one, ribbing, and you should end up your last stitch as a purl stitch. So meet me back when you've finished your first row. All right, so now we turn our work, 
And now here you can see when we turn, I don't know if you can see that well. So the first stitch will be a knit stitch, and this second one here with the little bump is a purl. So all we do is we continue with our knit one, purl one ribbing. So first stitch here, knit it, second one, purl. Okay, so we're going to continue doing that where we knit one, purl one to create a knit one, purl one ribbing. Uh, for a total of six rows. All right, so here we are. I finished six rows of the Knit One Pro One ribbing. Um, so this is what I've got so far. So now what I'm going to have to do is do a stretchy bind off. So I'm just going to remove that so it's not so distracting on the camera. So turn your right kind of left-handed knitter. So if you're not sure how to do the stretchy bind off in your right-handed knitter and just watching a lefty get you kind of confused. I know there's a ton of really great videos out there if you just uh, search stretchy bind off for knitting. Um, for my lefties, I'm hoping here soon to make another video in slow-mo that will show you how to do the stretchy bind off for lefties. All right, so, but for now, you can follow along. I'll give you detailed instructions on how to do it here. So the first stitch you're gonna knit off. So you always wanna knit the knits and purl the purls. So our second stitch is a purl. Now when you have two stitches on your working needle, okay, is when you're gonna do your stretchy bind off. So because I just did a purl, my yarn is in the front. Therefore, my working needle is gonna stay in the front. And then I'm gonna take my um, right hand needle or the needle that's in my non-dominant hand, and I'm gonna go through the back of those stitches, okay? And then at the front, I'm gonna wrap it around I'm going to use that index finger to just really tuck it in there to hold it in place while I bring my, my needle through and pull that loop up onto the needle and pull those two stitches off. Okay, so I've just done my first stretchy bind off. So now my next stitch is a knit stitch. Okay, so I'm going to knit that off. So now I have two stitches on my working needle. And because I knit, the yarn is in the back. So I'm going to keep my working needle in the back. I'm gonna take my non-dominant hand needle and go into the front of those two stitches. And then I'm gonna wrap the yarn around and kind of tuck it, hold it there with my middle finger so that I can work it to pull it up through onto that working needle. Okay, so I've just pulled those two stitches off into the one, bound it off, okay? So now the next stitch here is a purl stitch. Okay, you can see the little nub on the front of it. So I'm gonna purl the purl, so purl, and because my yarn is in the front, my working needle will stay in the front, my non-dominant hand is in the back, so it's going to insert into the back of those two loops. Okay. I'm going to wrap my yarn around the working needle, tuck it and hold it kind of tight if you can. And then pull up onto my working needle and slide those two stitches off. Okay. Another time, so our next stitch here is a knit stitch. So I'm going to knit the knit. I now have two on my working needle. My yarn is in the back, so my working needle stays in the back with that yarn, so it's easy to grab. My non-dominant hand will insert into the front of those loops. 
wrap around, hold it tight while you pull through. Oh, see now there I lost it. I didn't hold it quite tight enough. There we go. Slide it up onto the working needle, that loop, and pull those two stitches off. So you're going to continue doing that stretchy bind off all the way down um, until you've got them all the stitches bound off. And then I'll meet you back and I'll show you how what our next step is. Okay, here we are at the last bind off. So here, what you want to do is pull up so you have about um, a good 10-12 inches and then cut it off. Uh, that yarn there that you've just snipped the 10-12 inches, you're going to be using to sew the ear onto the hat. So you want to just be able to leave enough yarn to do that. Okay, so now here we have just this long piece that we've knit. So you're probably wondering, okay, so how do we get an ear out of that? So what our next step is here, and the reason we did this stretchy bind off is because this is the outside of the ear and we need kind of that extra stretch in order to fold it so it lays nicely. So the beginning cast on where we left that long tail here to sew the ear. We're going to take that and we're going to thread it onto our yarn needle. And then just lay your piece so that it's flat, so that it's outside. And then we're going to sew up this inner rim, this inner seam here, um, and bring that ear together. So to do that, I'm going to go over to this corner and then back in through and I'm working from the bottom underneath up through where I want to sew it okay and that'll just make a nice join there so now I'm going to use the mattress stitch technique and I'm going to go into all of these kind of the ribbing here you can see the rows that look like they're um, laying on top of the yarn here so I'm going to go into this one and then work my way from side to side to side working into the first stitch of those uh, rows that lay on top of the yarn okay I'm going to go from under and up and then I'm going to look for that first row there that lays on top and I'm going to go into the first stitch, okay? So I've already done this one here, so I'm going to move up to the next one. I'm going to do that here. I work into that first V hole there, if you can see it, okay? So that's it. You just want to keep rotating back and forth, just working into those rows that lay on top of the yarn with the mattress stitch. All right, so you can see here these last two is getting small, but I still have two rows that I haven't sewn into. So there's that one and then this guy right here at the top. Okay, so now you can see, give my yarn a little tug there just to pull that seam nice and tight. So we've made a nice seam right up the middle and created an ear. So just weaving your end here at the top and snip off your yarn, okay? All 
Okay. So now we want to take the last tail here and we want to thread that onto our yarn needle like so. Now we're going to go over to the opposite corner to the cast on first stitch there. Okay. Working the same way we did with the mattress stitch, working from underneath and pulling it up through. Then I'm going to go back to that corner where the stitch already is. Okay. And that'll close that up. And then you can see here, there's a bit of a gap. So I'm just going to work using my mattress stitch again and close up that seam. Okay. So here you just go in to the spaces that you feel will close this seam up nicely. There we go. Okay. So now we'll show you how to attach these ears onto the hat. So our thread, we don't want to be way up here because we're going to be using it to attach it onto the hat. So I'll show you when we do one side or the other ear, it'll matter which way we go in the direction for how we thread the uh, yarn down through. So for this here, here, I'm going to attach it to this side of the hat. So I want my yarn. See, I'm in the middle now. I want to come down to about this second rib here. So I'm just going to take my yarn and follow my threads of that rib down. Okay. There. So now you see it's come down this side of the ear and then for this other ear here, I'll come down the opposite side to about the same, you go from the middle, about that second rib in. Okay. Now on the hat, I look for the sides of the hat, the decrease row. So I like to work in that one. So you can see how it just kind of a little bit lays on top of uh, your hat, your decrease rows. You can just see a small indentation where the decrease rows are. So I like my ear to end up usually about the third stitch from the top. So I'll space those out evenly and I'll be working in my decrease rows. Okay. So I'm going to start down here. This side decrease row, I'm going to go to that last one that I can see kind of protrudes out. Go down and then I'm going to work my way up the next stitch and up to the next slot there in the ear. Okay. Then I will thread through the next stitch in the ear, working my way up the hat. I'm going to go into the next stitch there of the decrease, go down through the hat. Okay. Go up there, the next stitch and into the next stitch of the hat, which is almost the middle guy there. Go up. Okay. Just keep going up and down here. Working your way up. So now you can see here, I'm about at that third stitch from the top. So I want to be right there with my ear. And then I'm just gonna do that stitch, just repeat it just one more time, just to kind of give that a firmer because it likes to flop at that point. So I just like to make that nice and sturdy. All right. And then I'll turn my hat inside out and then just give it a knot and weave in my end a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. And snip. There we go. So you can see that that ear wants to flop nicely here on the hat. It's got a bit of a curve to it. So now for the other side, you would do the exact same thing. You would thread that down to about that second rib before and then start follow along your decrease row until you get to about the third stitch from the top. And that is how we do our little bunny ears. So meet me back in part five of the video series and I'll show you how to do the eye cord and tassel all as one consistent unit. So I don't make the tassel and then attach it on. I make it all one cohesive unit. So meet me back in part five.